to the grave than where, where we come from. And because the history of man, the history of the world, is, is if you think about it, is full of, it has been historically uh, conflict I mean, among one another. Yeah, you ever notice that? And, and I want to be able to sit there and say that the whole purpose of Christianity, the whole purpose of Yeshua coming into our life is because we needed a savior. We need a savior uh, to be part of our life because if we go by the lives that we live, a lot of us, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I think a lot of you think about it. We look at us and our life. Uh, sometimes it can be downright, downright depressive. And to go back to the, what I was going to share with you, let's see what the PowerPoint slide, make sure I get that right. When I, when I look at the, the, the slides and I say God looks at the heart, I, I want you to walk away understanding God looks at your heart, you know? And as we go into the scriptures, then Nehemiah 8, 8 to the right of me says, so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. I want us to make sure we understand the reading. You know, Romans 12 Verse one says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Think about that. We're supposed to present our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, not man. Don't get yourself wrapped up in what man wants you to do. That's what some people do. They, they, they forget the fact is that you're supposed to be a living sacrifice. You're supposed to be holy. You're supposed to be acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of who? God. We all get behind and center to the perfect will of man. Forget the perfect will of man because man, I, to be carnally minded is death. But spiritual might is life and peace. If we want to have peace, understand the will of God. Look at 1 Samuel 16, verse 7 said, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not unto his continent or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. It's the heart of a person. God knows we change based on our spirit, our heart, not based on us sitting there becoming all legalistic and, and hurting other people. First John, uh, I mean John 15, 1 said, I am the true vine and my father is a husband. Every branch of me that bears not fruit takes us away and every branch that bears fruit that purchases it and may bring forth more fruit. You know, I wanted to show that because the thing is that I, one of the questions I want to ask, and maybe you can, all of some of you can answer. I was reading through the New Testament. See, my foundation of being a Christian is based on the New Testament. Okay, the Old Testament was for Jewish people, and also for me to use for proof and correction. But it, but. My covenant is based on the foundation of my Savior. And I'm trying to understand where did we get the license, the authority to do bad things to people who you don't agree with? Or where did it so you, you, I'm talking about you. Where did you become the uh, execution of the law? Because we talk about people sitting there and say, 
Well, you, you got to go by the law, but where did you become the executioner or the enforcer of the law? Who are you? I, I really ask you, that's a serious question. Who are you to be the enforcer of the law? When did you become the enforcer of the law? When did you become that Christians are enforcers of the law? Because you're not, you, that's not what you're called to do. You've been called to go preach the gospel and teach the gospel, the good news, the ability to be delivered. Where did you become the avenger? You know, talking about somebody, one person talking about say where it said, he who has a sword don't have his back. You know, he's not having that sword, sword for, for vainness, but it's for purpose. When did you become deputized to be a, a law enforcer? I just, I just want to know, when did you, or where did you become a law enforcer? What do you become when you sit there and act like, uh, some of you think you're John the Baptist, but you're supposed to be Christian means Christ-like. Where do you see Christ sitting there going after people based on their immorality? He challenges the Jewish authority that sit there and show their hypocrisy of not showing love and mercy, but showing the legalistic, uncaring deadness of the law. And I say, what is dead in the law? Well, the law is good, but I'm telling you, the law is, is written on stone. It has no love in it. It's good, but it has no love in it. It's, dead, it's black or white. Either you do by the law or you die by the law. And the fact is, you everybody, Bible says, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means every last one of you should go ahead and, and you know, you, you should be struck by lightning. Or you go, go, go before the court so you can go ahead and get your judgment. For the wages of sin is death. But all I'm really asking is, and when did you become the, the enforcer of the law? And why would you want to be the enforcer of the law? Those people who've been called or ordained to be the ministers of the law, let them be the ministers of the law, but not you. He asked for all of us to be ministers of the law, enforcers of the law, but that's what we see. And some people go to the fact is, like that kid that sit there and went up in uh, Buffalo, New York, he he said, I'm not guilty for killing 10 people because I'm sitting there doing the right thing. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm the avenger. He was not deputized. He was 18 years old. He had no business having that type of weapon in the first place. But he was doing something that some of us all talk about. Some of us actually want to do. Some of us actually want to stone people but not realizing that all of us have said it comes short of the glory of God and we really need to get take care and address the true responsibility that a believer is supposed to have, which is to love one another because that's what you're called to do. And if you, you know what? I'll tell you what. We'll go with these scriptures. If you don't want to do it, then, then just make sure you understand are you, are you doing what Christ wants you to do and you're doing what you want to do. If you want somebody who want to glorify themselves in the flesh, somebody want to sit there and hate somebody because they they uh, of a political party affiliation, or someone want to hate somebody because of the color of their skin, vain glory. And this is what Christ said about this. He used an example. There was it was interesting. It had three. Uh, the Christ was in the in the in the wilderness for forty days and forty nights, tempted by the devil. And at the end of those 40 days, uh, the, the Bible indicated three more temptations. You know, one was turn that bread, turn the stone to bread. The other one was to jump off a cliff, commit suicide. You know, see if you can fly or see if the angels are going to pick you up. So we we're, would we're tempt you to go ahead. It's almost like those people in the Middle East that sit there and do a suicide bombing. You know, put the bomb on their bodies and then they go in front of a whole bunch of people and call themselves. Uh, I, I don't even, that's not even like that either. Because that's actually going to kill yourself. And then you try to do it, you say the name of God. But let's talk about the people who, uh, and that, that second one was the fact is that they wanted to see 
what the angel is going to do and attempt God by having Jesus jump off the cliff. That's how people try to do. But the one I want to do today, and I think is because those three were important. And the second one, I guess, matter of fact, is God is saying, don't you commit suicide. Don't do that. Please, don't do that. Your life is more important than a moment. Your life has a, you have a whole life in front of you. Don't, don't kill yourself because of the current situation. Situations change. Situation comes, situation goes, they change. And you don't base it on the situation. You base your life on being led and provided by God Almighty. Please remember that. The third one was the one that I think most of us have become guilty of. And, 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 and somebody will say, what are you talking about? Well, when you do things for what you think is glory or, or approval of man, because I don't know if you're trying to say, you, you, if you do, if you're hateful and you hurt somebody, you kill somebody, and you do that, and you think that's the approval of God, I really think you need to check yourself. You know, when did, when in the New Testament God sent anybody to kill anybody? Where? Who was doing all the killing? It was the legalistic people. It was the, 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 the pagans. But Christ was saying, love people. Well, when we come down and we're going to sit there and, and, and do it for recognition of people. The 14th, the man that on the 14th of May is now in jail, waiting trial. It ain't coming out. And there's nobody sitting there doing a protest while he's arrested. There's nobody sitting there writing love letters. He's going to find out that after a few years of fire, he's riding in jail and, and people don't care. But he did it. It's, 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 not, it's not worth it. They're the trying to be approved. Man will, man, if you try to get approval of man, man will let you down. He will let you down. And you don't want to sit there and, and risk giving your whole life uh, for vainglory. That's what I call vainglory, meaning that. They said, they said, yeah, man, you, you was cool. You were cool, man. You did, you, you did the right thing. But in reality, that person, they laugh at the person in the back. Look at this. That's what I'm saying. So watch out about this. This is in Matthew 4. He said, again, the devil takes them up into a sea and high mountain and showed them all the kings of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, all these things I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence safe, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. You don't serve man. You don't serve your color of your skin. You don't serve your political party to the point of above the will of God. Because God is not going to accept you. And you need to understand that. That's not even, that's, the, that's just the truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.